So our friend Crystal Ball on Hill TV uh, had an interview with Bernie Sanders, and um, it was great. So here's a clip of him weighing in on what led to the rise of charlatans like Trump and Bolsonaro. So in other words, what led to the rise of what many call the populist right, what I would call the fake populist right. But let's uh, take a listen to his answer here. Um, you mentioned Bolsonaro and how he's a, a Trump acolyte, and we see the rise of these far-right figures. There, Israel, you've made the, the comparison, uh, a lot of sort of far-right author authoritarian leaders around the world. Why do you think that we're seeing that right now? I'll tell you why I think so. I'm 100% sure. You know, what, uh, this is what I think. I think you got a global economy which has undergone a major transformation over the last many, many decades. All over the world, you're seeing rural communities, agricultural communities in trouble, family farmers going out of business in the United States, in Vermont, all over the world. Uh, you're seeing people moving to cities. You're seeing gaps, significant gaps in educational levels, uh, gaps in the utilization of technology. So I think what you're seeing in America, in rural America, where actually life expectancy is going down, going down, is a lot of people have been left behind. They're going, you know, the jobs they have don't pay them a living wage. They're worried that their kids uh, can't get an education, can't afford health care. Many of people in rural America are turning to drugs, uh, to alcohol, to suicide even. Uh, so I think you've got a whole lot of people who are falling behind and you have political leaders who have ignored that pain and that reality. Uh, the fact that people are working for low wages, they are spending half of their income in housing, they don't have any health care, they don't have any educational opportunities. And a lot of people around this country, and this is why I think Trump won, is people look at the Democratic establishment and they're saying, hey, I'm here. Do you know that I'm making 10 bucks an hour and I can't make it? Do you know that I'm paying a whole lot for rent that I can't afford, that I can't afford childcare? Anybody worried about me? Anybody care about me? Anybody know that I exist? And I think for a lot of those folks, you know, Trump comes along, I don't think people like Trump, I don't think they believe him, but he was different. So I think, and that's true to a large degree around the world, a whole lot of people feel left behind. Rich are getting richer. We have massive, not only in this country, we have massive income and wealth inequality worse than any time since the 1920s. That's true all over the world. So a lot of people are left behind, and they're looking, unfortunately, to authoritarian leaders who they believe can right the wrongs that they are suffering. So that is a very, very thoughtful answer from Bernie Sanders. And that's not the kind of answer you'd get from other Democratic candidates, bar maybe Tulsi. Tulsi might give a similar answer. But what he's saying is, and actually, let me rewind, what the other Democratic candidates would say is what? Why did, They would be asked, why did Trump win? And then they would say something along the lines of, well, he's really bad and his supporters are really bad. So he won because there's a lot of bad people who support bad things. Wow, what a deep and thoughtful answer. Now, are there some people who are what I call the TFGs, too far gone? Yes, there are, they are. And we're more than happy to call them out at every turn. David Duke or Richard Spencer didn't support Donald Trump because they thought, oh, he's going to save our jobs. David Duke and Richard Spencer supported Donald Trump because Donald Trump said in no uncertain terms that the Mexicans coming here, the criminals, they're rapists. I assume some are good people, uh, you know, because he said he wants a total and complete uh, shutdown of Muslims coming to the country. They voted for him because of the bigoted shit. So those people exist. But there are many people who are former two times Obama voters who flipped and voted for Trump. How do you explain that? Are those people just bigots, irredeemable deplorables who we should write off? No, they're not. What Bernie's saying is if you offer people something, you can win elections. You know, and the way I, I phrase it is get the people who are gettable. Hold your base. The Democratic Party needs to serve their base and hold their base. That's incredibly important. But also get new voters, get independents, and get the people who are gettable, who are either moderates or even self-described conservatives, but who are not insane. And there are people like that. Again, the former two times Obama voter who flipped and voted for Trump, they're not crazy. They're not bigoted. I'm not writing them off. These are people who actually have a, you know, an analysis of the political scene where they're looking for who's most likely to break up the status quo because the status quo is royally screwing them. And that's what Bernie's talking about here. He's talking about how economic globalization has led to the decline 
uh, in wages, in middle class income, and it's rendered people worse off. And so they're turning to what I call the fake populist right because they didn't see an option on the populist left. Because last time we had Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, and Hillary Clinton is, she's a fundamental representation of the status quo. She's not populist at all. She's an elitist who's nominally on the left. Whereas with Donald Trump, he was a fake populist on the right. Weird how he's the Republican candidate, but he spoke more about NAFTA, TPP, trade deals destroying factory towns on the campaign trail than she ever did. She tepidly came out against it after having endorsed it and calling it the gold standard of trade deals. She tepidly came out against it, thanks to Bernie Sanders. If he didn't push her there, she wouldn't have went there at all. Um, but Trump outflanked her on that issue and many other issues involving jobs and the economy and wages. And so that's a really important reason as to why he won. Let's be serious, guys. The, the deciding factor in the election is the Rust Belt. You might not like that system. I would push for a popular vote system, but we don't have that. We have the Electoral College. So it came down to the Rust Belt. What issues were most important to the people in the Rust Belt? Well, we know how many dilapidated factory towns there are over there that got destroyed because of NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, and then the Democratic president was trying to shove another trade deal, TPP, down their throats. So, you know, you can make an argument that that was the main issue because he only won because of like 70,000 votes in the Rust Belt. You, get, you flip those 70,000 votes and it goes in the other direction. So you can make an argument that, yes, wages and trade were, were like the most important issue in the last election. Now, again, Trump is massively hypocritical and he flip-flops like crazy. There was a time he said on the campaign trail, wages are too high because there were uh, minimum wage protesters outside of the venue where they were having the debate. So he's flipped on it. He's a hypocrite. But... The fact that he kept going to the Rust Belt and hammering home those themes that pretending to be a populist, that's a very important reason as to why he won. That's not to downplay the racism and the bigotry and the too far gone. They certainly exist. And I'm not, I'm not arguing for you to try to get the too far gone. I'm arguing for you to get who's gettable. And that's what Bernie Sanders is doing here. And it's a poignant analysis to not just pawn off like everything about Trumpism, everything about Bolsonaro, everything about the rise of this fake populist right, it's just bigotry, it's just xenophobia, and that's the end of the conversation. No, that definitely plays a part in it, and they definitely do divide and conquer and try to separate us along racial lines and religious lines and ethnic lines and whatnot. Um, that's certainly a part of it, where you get white middle class folks or lower middle class folks to blame poor black and brown people for their problems. Um, that plays a big role. It's the old establishment trick. But, that's not the end of the conversation. That's part of the conversation. And Bernie's alluding to the fact here that when you when Democrats give people something to care about, something to vote about, uh, about some hope, a very clear policy agenda, it's very likely that we'll win. And that's what he's offering. He's offering real populism, a real anti-corruption politics, a real anti-establishment politics. So... If you give people the choice between the fake populist right and the elitist left, they're going to go with the fake populist right. But if you give people a choice between the fake populist right and the real populist left, they're going to real populist left. Which is why I've said time and time again, if it's Bernie versus Trump, it's over. Bernie wins in a landslide. You don't even need to have the election. They're gonna, and they should, but I'm not worried in the slightest. I would be worried if it's anybody who has some establishment flavors in their politics versus Trump. But not if it's Bernie. So very thoughtful, very intelligent answer here from Bernie Sanders, and I love to see it.